All right, I haven't talked about the charger in a while. And you may be wondering what this box of parts here is. Well, let me show you. These are replacement axles with green bearings. They're the press-on new style green bearings already installed. This is a sure grip posi traction unit and the sure grip is what Mopar called it back in the day. And also in that box is a brand new ring and pinion, what we would call a 373. And then some other incidental parts and things like that, like a yoke adapter and all that stuff. Stuff that's not really exciting to talk about, but necessary when you're converting these things over. So what I have here in this car, this is a 276 open differential, or what commonly referred to as a one-legger. So if you see me do anything with this car, doing burnouts, it's only pulling one tire. I try to make enough smoke where it looks like both tires are pulling, but clearly it's a one-wheel peel, what they call it. fix that so what's funny about the Mopar this is an eight and three quarter rear end in this car and the four nine inch rear end is very eerily similar where the back of the housing is actually built into the rear end and all the guts and stuff come out from the front so it's all these bolts in the front you unhook the drive shaft you unbolt the axles you undo the bolts and you literally pull the front of the rear end apart and the gear set, the differential, the yoke, everything is actually attached to the front section there. You pull it out in your hand. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it all apart. And since I don't know anything about setting up gears and all that, um, I'm gonna take it to somebody that does, and I'm gonna let them set up the proper backlash and the side load and all this stuff that I don't know anything about. I'm gonna get that set up properly, and then I'll bring it back, and I can put it back in myself, and I'll put the new axles in and seals and things like that. And that's gonna take this car from a 276 gear to a 373 gear. So we're going up one whole point in size and gears. That's gonna wake this thing up. It's gonna become an animal. Cause think about it. Most people go from like a 308 to 355 or a 327 to 373 in their Mustang or something like that. We're going from a 276 to a 373. So this thing's gonna go through the gears really snappy and the biggest thing is going to go to a posi unit where it's actually a sure grip unit where it's going to spin both tires. So now I can go do burnouts and it's going to actually spin both tires. I can do donuts now if I want to and spin this big boat around. So stay tuned. It's going to be pretty cool at the end of this video when hopefully you're going to see me doing some burnouts with both. And that Hemi, I mean, let's be honest, it's probably making now in this car about 375 to 400 horsepower because it's only 85 it's got a custom tune it's got long tube headers and all the normal stuff but it's still stock heads and all this and that's not the back tires that's flywheel horsepower is what i'm talking about now but it's a heck of a lot more power than what that 318 tube rail came with and it's probably just as much horsepower rated as what some of those 383 big blocks had back in the day let's be honest and uh None of those 383 big blocks back in the day could get 20 plus miles to the gallon and run on E85 and uh, still be as efficient as what this car is. So I really like my Gen 3 Hemi and the five speed automatic. And with the five speed automatic and all that overdrive that I got, run 373s is nothing. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually gonna be really comfortable with the tall tire I've got. That's a 275 60 on the back. So let me get to work. I'm gonna raise it up in the air show you how to take the rear end apart, pull the axles out, pull the rear end center section out, and then we'll go through the parts and where I'm gonna take them. Stay tuned. All right, so first thing to do is get on the lift, get in here and unbolt your drive shaft from the end of your rear end housing, like you can see mine there. And then you start to look at all of this, <laughs> in my case, 50, 455 years of debris that has accumulated on this rear end. So, or you can ever get these uh, nuts off of the studs. So, 
What we're gonna do here, we're gonna remove these nuts off of these studs. Ah, man, but this thing is built up. Let me show you how bad it's built up here. Look at that. That's just dirt and grime and debris that has just built up on this rear end. And my job is to clean all this off first to make a clean working surface before I start taking it all apart. So, got a little bit of work ahead of me. So I gotta clean all this off. And then once I get all that clean and the threads clean, cause I don't wanna run the nuts through all that debris and dirt and get them in the threads and run the risk of stripping in these threads. Then I can get all these nuts off. But before I can go to pull this off, I'd like to get this loose so I can drain the fluid and all, but I have to go out here, take the wheels off, pull the axles out, and then I can pop this out. So just wanted to show you first, get the drive shaft out. I'm gonna lower it down, take the wheels and tires off, take the axles out, but I've got some scrubbing in here to do first. All right, what well, seems like an eternity later, with a bristle brush and some soft brushes and a screwdriver basically. I poked and prodded and scraped with the screwdriver, the big stuff, and then bristle brushed and soft brushed the rest of it. I've got it clean all the way around. Then I took my air hose and I blew out all the debris that I could to get everything away from it. And now I'm ready to lower it down, get the wheels and tires off, get the axles out and then I can start pulling this off. Probably gonna pull the drain plug out first, see if there's any fluid up to that point, get it out. I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be any higher than that, but go ahead and take that out now. And then I'll go ahead and pull these nuts off and then we'll start popping this off. Now, if there's a gasket in there, like it should be from the factory, this should pop off real easy. But if they've ever put silicone on it, it'd be a little more difficult to get that off, but we'll be able to get that off. And then I'll show you how you wiggle that off this whole piece pops off and the gears will be hooked to it, the open differential and everything. And this is the piece I'm gonna take and get it fixed up. All right, you make sure you trick to get the axle bearing seal out of a Mopar. Normally, you have a tool like this, and this tool is pretty cool. You pull this pin out, and you can rotate the head left or right, and you can pull a bunch of seals out with this pretty easily. This tool works great, but it doesn't reach in here far enough to get the Mopar seal out. Because I tried it, it doesn't work. So a trick is when you have a a seal that's really far recessed. And I have it pulled out just to show you what I've got. I've already knocked it loose, but let me show you what I did here to get it to this point. Let me push it back like this real easy. So it's sitting in there like that. Your tool can't reach it. So you just take something like this. I've just got a long 3 8 extension. You push on one side like this, and you basically just take something like I did, like a, a rubber hammer you start banging on it and you bang on the one side. And what happens is by leverage, you bang on the one side, it pushes in and it literally pushes the other side open like that. And then you can go in here and go pop. And that's how you get an axle bearing seal out of a Mopar. Easy peasy. You don't mess up the end of the housing there. And you can still read the numbers and get the right seal unless you're like me and you go to drdiff.com and talk to Cass and Cass hooks you up with a whole box over there of seals, axles with the bearing pressed on it and the whole thing ready to go. So, just in case you were wondering, that's how you do it. <laughs> and the paper gaskets on these always deteriorate and fall apart. So I just went ahead and picked that off. I'm gonna take like a little plastic, uh, file that I've got. I'm going to push that paper off of there. See that 
we got to clean that off really good. You want your mating surfaces to be super clean and flat. You don't want to take any kind of metal object and gouge it. So you need to use plastic. So like a plastic scraper, plastic razor blade, whatever you got. I may have a plastic razor blade over there. You just go in here and clean that off really well. Take some uh, brake clean or carburetor cleaner or something and then wipe the surface off really good and go in here and wipe all that out really well and then you'll be good to go. I tried not to disassemble drum brakes because they're a real pain to put back together. So I did have to unhook this side and the little adjuster here to get the little parking brake piece that goes across here because it was keeping the axle from coming out. So I still have them attached, just a one spring, the adapter here, just to get that piece off. So it's not gonna be too difficult to put back together. But when I had to pull the axle out, it was hitting. So there we go. Just wanted to show you the mystery of getting the axle seal out of a Mopar. And as I was demonstrating, there's a bigger hole in the axle. If you rotate it around, you can get a 916 socket in here, pull the nuts off and you're good to go. What I didn't show you was I took some brake cleaner and sprayed in here and used a brush and cleaned the nuts off real good to get all the dirt and debris out of the way before I took the nuts off to make them easier to come off. All right, so it does take some persuasion, but there you go. Fluid's leaking out. Had to tap around a little bit. I had to make sure you go in here and clean out all the dirt. Once you get the bolts off, you have to go around here and tap a screwdriver and then kind of prise against it like this. This gets the fluid out. And again, it helps to get all the dirt out of there. So we're gonna prise it up, let the fluid drain out. Surprisingly, that fluid doesn't look that horrible. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, it's possible somebody did a fluid change at one point. I know they changed the studs in this axle, so they probably pulled this axle out because this is the driver's side. And as you know, it had left-hand threads and somebody probably broke those off at one point. The right side was factory studs. So at a minimum, somebody probably had to pull the axle and change the studs. They probably thought it was a good idea to go ahead and service the rear end fluid, but you know, uh, maybe they changed it. It sure was nasty. So if they did change it, maybe it was changed once in the last 50, 54 years, you know, 55 years, I guess it is now. 54 and a half to be accurate. This car was built October, 1967. But there it is, I'm gonna let that drain on out. And uh, once this drains sufficiently, I'll manhandle this out. That's right, I said manhandle, because biologically a man, you soak on that for a minute. <laughs> All right, be triggered. All right. All right, ready for the show? Let's do this. Probably would like to see it though, right? Probably be helpful. All right. Yeah. Check this out. There is your differential. And you know what? It may not ever been off. That is a paper gasket there. I thought it had been silicone because it was so tight. So that is a paper gasket. And that is your 276 gear and open differential. Pretty neat, huh? All right, 
Boom. Dunzo. All right, I just opened up my kit from drdiff.com, which is Cass. These are my new axles with the green bearing already pressed on. That's cool. This is my 373 gear set. This is the pinion adapter that I need with the 1350 U-joint that I need. This will fit my existing drive shaft and adapt it to this, which is cool. Then that's the bearing and seal kit. And that's the new Sure Grip Posi Traction Unit, just like would have come in it back in the 60s, but Cass has gone through it and made sure that bad boy is blueprinted ready to go. That's some friction modifier. I've got to go get some GL5 um, fluid for the rear end. He gives you some setup instructions here and stuff for it. And uh, he gave me a link to the Yukon gear setup right up that he said to use and I'm getting the rear end set up for the backlash and the gear set and all that. But that's it. And if you're wondering, what's the best way to carry the third member where you're gonna get it serviced? Well, a Home Depot orange bucket works extremely well. You can just drop it in here like this. You got a nice carry handle. You can grab this bad boy and away you go. Boom. So that's the best way to, to transport it, I found. It's uh, cheap, it's simple, and works. So that's how I'm gonna transport it. And I'm gonna get these parts over here together. What I need to take it to get the rear end built. So basically I'm gonna need the bearing kit the gears this piece that i don't need this that stays here i'll make my own drive shaft adapter i'll keep the axles here i'll keep the rear diff cover here and the fluid but the rest of the stuff will go and uh, yeah we're gonna get it all set up just wanted to show you what i'm working with here <sighs> and in this pack should be Let's see here. And seal, because I need two. So I'll make sure we got some axle seals in here somewhere, because we have this. And, uh, oh yeah. So the way this works, this is the new style. The seal's already on here. This is the new style, so I'm sorry. Uh, this actually goes on and slides up in there, and that's gonna seal it and seal the bearing there and certain styles you can run an inner seal anyway because my mustangs are like that you can have just this or you can add an additional seal down here so i'll call Cass and see what he thinks if i need to add that other seal like the factory had or if this is good enough this is good enough not even gonna worry about it i'll pop this bad boy in bolt it up with this and we'll be straight this is what's nice getting it from Kaz. This is already pressed on, ready to go. You literally bolt this up, just like the ones I took out, and we're, we're straight. All right, just wanted to show you what I got.